Okay, this is going to be an introduction to geometric modeling. Uh, you may have already kind of reviewed some of this material before or been introduced before, so maybe it's a review for most of you. But I like to go through uh, the basics just to make sure we're all on the same page. Alright, content here. Uh, introduction to geometric modeling. What is it? Right. Uh, review of 3D modeling types, wireframe modeling, surface modeling, and solid modeling. And then overview of the feature-based modeling. So this is basically what I want to review for lecture here. So introduction, what is geometric modeling? Well, we've been doing it quite a while. We've been doing uh, various forms of it uh, over the past year and a half or so. Uh, but, you know, really in, in terms of just geometric modeling, uh, the definition is the modeling is a process in which an object or part is created using a mathematical coordinate based representation of surfaces in a 3D space. So, you know, how are we going to represent this model um, or this solid object is going to be some mathematical coordinate, right? So, three main types here, as we mentioned here before, is wireframe modeling. So, this uses a simple external frames to represent the geometric model. Uh, surface modeling uses external meshing to represent more complex shape, geometric shapes. Uh, and then solid modeling itself uses 3D shapes to create an object to represent a solid geometric shape, allowing for operations such as cut and extrude. So we'll talk about each one of these here. So wireframe, a couple examples uh, over on the right. Uh, this, this type of modeling is meant to show the, the frame of the object in the wire-like lines representing the surface of the part. You can kind of think of CAD 3D uh, in, in a way. Um, essentially you're trying to make a drawing in three-dimensional space of all the important features of the part. Surface modeling is uh, basically this is related to the wireframe meshing in a way so it's, it's really kind of the the wireframe with a surface finish. Uh, so a surface mesh is used to with the material filling in the outer frame of the model itself and adding a surface effect. So typically there's no thickness in, in the surface unless it's specified by the designer or the software. So this is typically things like we see, uh, you see in video games um, or simplistic, uh, if we're just say doing um, like plastic injection molding parts, you're typically going to have uh, this is one of your modeling techniques because that's all you're really worried about is the surface, right? There, or a small thickness in, in that surface. So solid modeling itself, um, solid modeling is, is really what we've been focusing on for the most part with our courses here. Uh, so the three-dimensional modeling that we use for solid works and, and such is typically gonna, that we've been doing is solid modeling. So this is uh, where you make a quote-unquote solid model in three-dimensional space. Uh, so it's a solid geometric shape that allows you to add combining, you know, basically combining materials or extrusions or is subtracting and um, subtraction of that solid material. So cuts, right? So complex 3D shapes are created through a series of additions or subtractions of primitive shapes that we've seen. So looking at some of those primitive shapes, you know, what, what are the typical cuts and extrudes that we typically do? Well, cones, cylinders, wedges, you know, spheres, boxes are really the, the main types, you know, pyramids and spheres, toruses. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the typical simple shapes that really create everything else for the most part, right? So basic shapes to use to actually combine and create 3D objects in a primitive modeling, um, atmosphere right so primitive modeling examples so using those simple shapes here we're gonna basically pop them all together and make uh, another shape right another object so this is here we're, we're basically putting them together that's your primitive modeling example getting into constructive solid modeling so when you start say Doing it in constructive solid, mo solid modeling, this allows for Boolean operations such as uni unions, differences, intersections between simple 3D shapes. So this could allow you to make cuts. 
So here they're doing a union to make basically a general shape that they're going to remove from this other common part. So this adds a bit more capabilities than you have with primitive modeling. Really that boolean effect is, is big, right? being able to add or subtract. Feature-based modeling, um, so this is essentially that boolean um, effect to this uh, is really the main main part of this but now we're going through and we're modifying the part right we're putting features to it so feature-based modeling builds its 3d models using a series of features so common features that we see are holes slots square square blocks uh, rectangular blocks cylinders you know there's there's a bunch of different shapes we can make uh, or features that we can put into our part uh, the geometry of uh, features are controlled by modifiable constraints and dimensions. So we can actually go in and then modify, say, our bolts change size. We want to make those bigger or smaller. Um, we can do that. So we can go into that feature and modify it. And this is where we see um, we can add those features. Well, it's base, uh, blind holes. Um, we have a boss that we're doing, so we're adding material. Uh, we're putting through holes in, counterbore through holes, uh, some patterns, and we can actually go in and modify those features. So this is what we're really used to with SolidWorks, right? So those operations that we see, again, rather straightforward, something you're, you're really common with. Uh, we, I know we've already done it this semester, but that's a, our extrude operation. So it's where we make a 2D shape here, draw it in a two-dimensional plane that we're interested in creating the shape off of, and then we go through and extrude it to some general thickness. And this can be an extrude cut or say an um, boss base, you know, we're going to add material. Same thing with uh, revolve operations, we can add or subtract a revolution of materials. So here um, we're taking a general profile and we have to then revolve it around an axis, right? And that axis can be uh, any radius or uh, distance away from that, that axis, and we can get basically a through hole. So there's different operations where we see this being used, uh, especially for various types of thread and other things. Um, but actually, when we start talking about threading, this is where loft and sweep really takes place. So creating a little bit more advanced features or a feature that follows a general direction um, or say path is going to be your sweep or loft operation. So the differences between the two, I mean they're pretty similar but um, really the big difference is on, on the lofting operation you have a change of shape here. So sweep and loft operations involve an extrusion of a 2D profile along a path. So we have this general 2D profile here and we're going to project it along a certain path, any given distance. In this case, we want to make, say, a picture frame or, or some sort of framing. We can do that along that path, and that creates that same profile along the path. The lofting operation, again, is going to change and kind of merge into the new shape. So you actually draw two different shapes, and then you'll have an axis. This will follow. And again, you'll project it, and as that merges to the new shape, it'll change its overall profile. So you have to draw two different profile shapes to have it extrude and change. Uh, so those are really the two other different types of operations used for, for your typical operations. Um, I'm sure there's, there's others that have been created, but these are your, your main types. 3D modeling and design intent. So another really important feature to your your really geometric modeling here is going to be your prep, your your design intent here. So it's always good to think about what you're creating, how you're creating it. So most modeling involves some taught um, some some thought uh, to creating this model. So what do, what was your design intent? How do you plan on developing it? Um, if it changes, is it going to be easy to go in and modify it? That's a really big one because it could save you a lot of time, make your development more efficient. So 
having that goal product or goal shape or design in mind is really a good thing for creating a model with some sort of design intent to it. So creating this model with a planned purpose in mind can make an efficient modeling modifications for specific features. So for instance, um, maybe it was this part here, um, you're, you're doing a spur gear set and you want to model the teeth to where maybe we make those finer or say more, more robust, it would make them thicker. Uh, would it be easy to go in and just modify that profile and reproject uh, the number of teeth on that? Um, you know, if you think about it while you're creating it the first time, yeah, it might make it easy. If you're not, you might have to go in, reconstrain a bunch of things, um, or maybe you didn't make it to where it's really easy to, to modify, and then you have to go through and essentially recreate the part uh, as, as a new part. So having that design intent um, can actually save you quite a bit of time. So typically models have um, modifications, right? So this is typically why when we make our drawings, especially this semester, I don't know if you have all done this before, but in, in my class where you're, you're making your drawings, that revisions list up at the top right where you write your name and say, you know, this is the initial design or initial drawing, um, that revisions list is because of the modifications parts get in the future. So going in and changing that part, people can say, all right, well, we changed this bolt hole. We changed the mounting pattern or the clearances. And you can actually point to where you made those changes and why. Um, so that makes sure that you don't necessarily say that send the draw wrong drawing to get machined and then have a bunch of parts that you can't use with the new model. Um, so again, that's uh, efficiency as well as saving money. Um, on potential mistakes. So revisions lists are, are rather useful and getting used to them uh, is is really a good thing. Um, but other than that, that'd be it for uh, lecture this week. Um, <clears throat> I will have a little bit of a homework finishing up the g-code, but um, these are a few references that I've used for pulling pictures. Some of these are actually pretty neat because they have some extra material to them. If you want to go to uh, check out the links, um, like the core websites uh, are pretty neat because they have um, really more about the CAD modeling and solid modeling uh, features. Uh, all right, but that's it for this week. All right, later.